since Christ died on the cross are part of his body. You know, some people would say, no, 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 you gotta believe first, or no, 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 you gotta do this, or you gotta do that, or you gotta go to church, or somebody else is standing. But what I'm here to tell you today, guys, is that no. No. Every single one of us, every single one of us is in his body. The same. Yeah. He died for you, yeah. He died that your sins might be forgiven. Yes, yes. The question is, will you receive this? When you receive this, what will you do? Because brothers, that is going to determine as to whether or not you will remain in His body for eternity. Because the day is coming when there shall be a separation. You understand? A separation. There shall be a separation. Yes. But the choices that we make in the here and now will determine whether we ourselves are separated or not. I hope you guys take that to heart, man. Because it matters. It matters more than anything. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 21. Let's get a little understanding. And when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why call us thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not thy neighbor, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lacks, go thy way, sell all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. You know, uh, some people uh, do not believe that in order for us to have eternal life, that we have to obey God. For some reason. I, yeah, okay. For some reason, that they think that Jesus Christ came to free us from the commandments of God, that we no longer have to keep them, not really, because it's, it's impossible. You know, nobody can do this. Okay. And yet Jesus, over and over and over throughout the Gospels, tells us that we got to obey God. Yeah. He told the young ruler that he had to obey God, sell all that he had, and give to the poor, yeah, break up his cause, and come follow him. You know, uh, brothers, I've said this before, and I must say again this morning, it is not going to be until you pick this book up, and you read it, and you believe what it says, literally. Literally. Word for word, literally. Yes. Because most of it is very literal. However, there are some things that are going to require a bit of further understanding. Yes. But if your heart is genuine to the literal understanding, guess what's going to happen? The Holy Ghost is going to teach you those things that require further understanding. Because of your desire. Simply that. Nothing more. Is your desire genuine? Alright. So be it. He told the rich young leader to obey the commandments. He named off a bunch, and I don't know how you guys picture this scene, but to me, I see Jesus. He's walking, he's talking, he's doing his thing, man. And this guy is back here somewhere. I mean, the people are pushing and talking around Christ. I mean, there's no breathing room, and this man is trying to get up to Christ. He's trying to ask Christ his question because it really matters to him. Because I hope, I hope that you go to this book without saying further. Asking your questions. Yes. And the man came up to Christ and he asked him, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And he was impatient. He needed the answer. He had to know. Man. And so Jesus began naming off commandments. You know? Yeah. And I picture the man being so impatient that he just interrupted Christ. Yes, because he knew exactly what Christ was saying. We must obey God. Yes. Okay. All the answers I've done for my youth up. I've kept God's commandments since I was a kid. What more do I need? And Jesus said, looked upon him and loved him. Notice how he said, and loved him. Yeah, alright. And told him that he must go and sell all that he has and get to the poor. In the beginning, I took that to be literal. Oh, I've got to sell everything I have. I've got to have nothing. I must be a vagabond in this earth like 
Christ because isn't that exactly what he did? Did he not walk away from everything that was his? Everyone that loved him, did he not forsake it all? Think about that. Alright. But it's just to be honest with you this morning, this is a little bit of further understanding here. Not that you must go sell all that you have, brothers, but you must forsake this world. What you desire? What is it that you want to own? What is it you want to buy? I don't know. What's your greatest desire, brothers? I hope your desires are on the heavenly things. Yes? Because I'm looking at a lot of you, and I've seen you here before many, many times. And there is something about you that I believe. Yes? And that is that the seed that exists within you is genuine. Yes. Genuine, brothers. Genuine. All right. So then, let your fervent desire be on those things that are above. Because of the new heart that God has given to you. Remember, I said, we must think what God says is right is right. What God says is wrong is wrong. Notice how Jesus said, how can you call me good? I'm not good. There's none good except God. Even Jesus would not call himself good. Because listen, there is nothing, nothing good except what God says. That's it. That's all the good there is. Whether it be right or whether it be wrong, that's all there is. When we accept this, when we understand this, brothers, we will receive the new heart. Say this desires are the things above. Forsake this world. Don't get me wrong. I'm a husband. Yeah, yeah. There's some things that I'm supposed to be as a husband. Yeah. According to the word of God, one of the things that I gotta be is a provider. Yeah, I have to provide. You know? Okay. Part of my provision are things of this world. Just saying. Yeah. Alright. You know, uh, I had it twisted there for a little while, and I began to set myself out in the rat race, you know, uh, wanting to provide, but not just provide, but provide good. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And there were things that I thought was good above other things. Yeah. Uh, and I almost slipped and tripped. Because this, you work the work that is before you. And do it as if God Almighty had called upon you to do this task, or whatever that task may be. Whether it's for someone else, for yourself, it doesn't matter. As if God had told you to do this. Because, brothers, if you are doing it, and if you consider it to be good, or the fruit of it to be good, then it is from above. Yes. Brothers, listen. God is going to provide to you everything that you need in the moment that you need it. Yes. You must trust this one. You've got to believe this because you will get stuck on this thing that you think you need. And what's going to happen is it's going to be over here in the direction that you were going. But then you're going to find yourself going like this. And you're going to be stuck looking at it. And now watching where you're going. What happens when you walk and don't watch where you're going? Alright guys, listen. A man makes his plan. Nothing wrong with that, guys. If there's a plan that you're trying to make, a goal that you're trying to set forth, something that you want to achieve, man, pray that it is in God's will to begin with, yes, and take off. But do not be surprised when you start dreaming away. Because though a man makes his plan, the Lord directs his steps. Are you walking with the Spirit or not? Alright. Pick up your cross. Come follow me. You know, there's something about this picking up our cross this morning that dawned upon me, man. Uh, we, for us, picking up the cross, you know, it has a meaning for us. You know, we know Jesus Christ died on the cross, man. We don't exactly, we don't, I don't think we exactly understand what Jesus was saying when he said, pick up your cross. But at that time, the Romans were persecuting the Hebrew peoples. They were putting them to death. Day after day after day after day, well, those people who were in rebellion to the Roman Empire, the sons, as they were called, were being killed on the cross, being crucified. But Jesus was telling these people, pick up your cross and follow me. It took me, I, I didn't really understand it this way, guys. But before he said that, he was telling these people, this man, this young man, that he needed to forsake the world. Yeah. Pick up his cross 
I can't follow Christ. Friends, this as Christ's disciple, there are going to be times when there are going to be things that you do or need to do or should do that are not going to line up with what this world wants or says is okay or is good. Yeah. And guess what's going to happen to you because of that? You're going to be persecuted. You are going to be hated. And in certain days ahead, you will be killed. Yes. Pick up your cross. Don't be ashamed of it, friends. Don't be ashamed of it. The cross was shame to him who knew no sin. Jesus was a righteous man, having never committed a sin or a crime, because at that time, sin was crime. You know, here we can lie and get away with it, you know what I mean? It's not really a crime. But there it was a crime. All right. Jesus was not a criminal, and yet he had to bear that cross through the town as if he were a criminal. With people spitting on him, and jeering him, and slapping him, and throwing stones at him. A shame. It was a shame. Because there's lots of things that you have done in your life. Lots and lots of things that you have done in the darkness that you don't want no one to know about. People you have wronged that you don't want them to know about. Guys, listen. We must bear our cross, which is that shame. It must be on display. People must know what it is that we have done. We must confess these things. Trust me, brothers, I'm not proud to stand down here and tell people I sold my flesh. There's nothing I feel that's good about that. Do you understand? But I cannot be forgiven until I confess. But furthermore, furthermore, somebody is going to hear me say that. And they will have done that also. And because of that, they will be having hope. They will have hope. Bear your crosses, brothers. Come follow Christ. Come follow Christ. That's what a disciple does. Isn't it? Just like follow the leader, man. Come follow Christ. What did Christ do? What did he do? How did he do it? Why did he do it? We must know these things. We must, brothers. This is who God is calling us to be. This is what God has predestined us to be for the beginning of time. To be like Christ. We must. But it is possible. Christ was the first fruit. Yes. The first person raised from the dead. And he was so because of his faith. Brothers, you must also possess the same faith that Christ had. Remember, faith was not just believing that God existed, but believing God, what God says. God makes a lot of promises to us, brothers. And you know these promises are supposed to give us hope. They should do one of two things. The promises in the Word of God should do one of two things. One is that it should give you hope that tomorrow will be better. And if not tomorrow, then the day that He raises you from the dead. And it should make you fearful. Fearful! Because God will punish disobedience, brothers. It just is. The wrath of God will be poured out upon the world because of the children of disobedience. Not my words. Alright? Grumblings. Yeah. Check that out. <sighs> well, who can't be saved? None of us can be perfect, right? Not until we're redeemed. Not until Christ comes and receives us. Yeah? But what can you be? What can you be? You can be a good disciple, brothers. You can follow Christ. You can step in His steps. Just the way that He did. For the same reason that He did. You can do this, brothers. You must do this. 
Luke 14, 26 to 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cause and come after me cannot be my disciple. I have to talk that too, guys. Yeah, I'm just saying yes. You know, this word hate, especially because, you know, we, we know that we're not supposed to hate anyone, right? Yeah, we're supposed to love everyone as ourselves. Yeah, all right. You notice how he said hate even ourselves. I struggled with that. I didn't really have too much to worry about right there because I didn't have no mama. And I didn't have no dad. And I really didn't have no brothers or sisters. You know, I really never had those things. So it wasn't that hard for me at first. And it took a little further understanding. Christ is not telling us that we have to hate. He's not telling us for our hearts to be void of love for these individuals. That's not what he's saying. Yeah? Alright. What does a disciple do? What Christ says. Or what the Master says. Whomever it is that you're following. This is what a disciple does. Yeah. Okay. So, what happens when the master says one thing, but somebody that you love says something different? Or wants something different from you? Or wants you to do something different than what the master says? Who do you love the most? Who do you love in that situation most? It's got to be the master. Absolutely. It must be the master. And listen, brothers, that's going to be a hard choice. There's going to be times in your life where that choice is going to be difficult to make. It is going to hurt. But what I'm telling you, brothers, what I'm telling you is that when you make that choice, in the moment that you make that choice, this light, this light that burns within you, will shine more brightly than it has ever shined in your life. And hopefully, hopefully that person around you that is trying to move you away from what the Master says will see you that will see the strength and the determination that it takes to make that decision. And come and follow Christ. Because that's where the strength comes from. That's where it comes from. Remember this verse. Bear your cross. Come follow Christ. If you don't bear your cross, then how can you follow Christ? It's got to happen, guys. I know one of the steps is called making amends, is it not? Yeah, all right, just say amen. Yeah. You must reconcile to those people whom you have wronged, especially if they don't know that you wronged them. The truth, brothers. The truth is necessary. Listen. Luke 9, 23 to 26. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man gained if he gained the whole world and lose his soul or to be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. You know guys, in the beginning of my walk, there were times that I was ashamed. The same. There were times where there were things in this world, things that were popularly accepted or, or things that people liked and wanted to do. And, and when the situation came upon me and I did not want to confess that no, Jesus Christ said no. I was ashamed in that moment. I was ashamed in that moment. Yeah. And then I remembered that Jesus said anyone that is ashamed of him or anything that he says, Jesus Christ shall be ashamed of us. Yeah. But I don't want Jesus, God, or the Holy Spirit, man, or anyone for that matter, but those three especially, to be ashamed of me. I've carried enough shame, brothers. I hope to think that we all have carried enough shame. Yes. 
brothers, listen. Listen. It's one thing for people to be ashamed of you because of what you've done wrong. But it's quite another thing for people to be ashamed of you because you follow Jesus Christ. I will bear that shame, brothers. I will bear it proudly. I will wear it gladly. Gladly. Brothers, because I'm telling you now, someone, someone is going to see the strength that it took to bear that cross in front of all those people who are laughing at you, who are calling you whatever name you want to choose, however it want to work. Someone is going to see you, and someone is going to desire what it is that they see you carrying in that moment. Especially that which is in your heart, brothers. Make no mistake. You cannot be ashamed of Christ, brothers. Nothing that he says and nothing that he does. Yeah. And nothing that he's telling you to do, right? And nothing he's telling you not to do. You know, some people, especially church folks, have problems with, you know, uh, proclaiming some things that God says not to do in front of people who do those things that God says not to do. Sexual immorality of some sort. Yeah. All right. How we gotta accept it. We gotta love everybody. I'm just saying, man. Yeah. Instead of putting the foot down and sharing the truth, hoping that by the truth this person may be set free of what it is that they are doing. Yeah. So that rather than beating them, they join you. No, brothers. No. Never be ashamed of what God tells us to do and not to do. Yeah. Never be ashamed of what Christ is telling us to do as his disciples. Never. Be proud, brothers. Be proud. Yes. Be proud that you have been chosen to do this work as Christ's disciple. John 8, 31-36. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him and said, We are Abraham's seed, and we were never in any bondage to any man. How sayest thou that you should make us free? And Jesus answered them, saying, I say unto you, that whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, then you shall be free indeed. If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Yeah. You know, uh, thought about that, you know, and, and like everybody else, I was like, man, you know, I, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to love my enemy. There's no way I'm going to be able to share love with this guy, man. Yeah, I'm just saying, all and all over and around, I've got these things. Yeah. Jesus didn't say, if you are perfect in my word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word. Well, think about that. When do you give up? At what point do you throw your hands up and just give up? How many times do you got to fall on your face before you say, Heck with it, I'm done, man, I can't do this, it's over. How many times? I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe different for each of us. But I do know that in this world, there comes a point in time, after we fail so many times, we stop trying and we give up. Some of us, less than others. Listen, brothers. If ye continue in Christ's word, ye shall be his disciples. Don't give up, guys. I know, hey, look, I know it's not hard, man. Excuse me. I know it's not easy. Yeah, all right. But why did you do it? Why did you call on him to start with? What was it that you wanted? What is it that you felt you needed? Do you not still need that? Do you not still want that? Because I don't know about you brothers yet, but I have not received my eternal life yet. 
I have not had my sorrow and my pain and my tears removed yet. I have not received my crown. I have not received my new name. I have not received the place that Christ went to prepare for me, brothers. Yeah. That's when I'm stopping. Whatever it is I gotta do to get there. Because then I'll be there. Never give up, brothers. Never stop. Continue in Christ's word. How are you gonna continue in Christ's word if you don't know what he's saying? Brothers, if you'll read through the four gospels, you'll come to understand that there are many things. Many, many things that Christ is telling us to do and not to do. Yeah, alright. Yeah, you might want to start getting that in because that's what a disciple does. Listen now, earlier I made a bold claim. I said that every one of us was in the body of Christ. Every single person that uh, has ever lived since Christ died on the cross. Yeah. Like I said before, some people disagree with that, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Some people place a, a, a criteria upon this, you know, or, or exceptions or standards, or I understand, but this is what I must have you know today. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 16. I am the true vine, and my Father is the groom. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he harvested, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and then he is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that your joy might remain, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord do. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Now whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. All right. I know. Because I don't know about you guys, man, but that to me is like a love letter. Those words, man. All those powerful promises, man. Yeah. To me, that is like a love letter. Yeah. Listen to what he said. He is the vine. You are the branch. Yeah. All right. Earlier, I said that every single one of us was in the body of Christ. Yes. Every single person that has been alive, that has taken a breath, have been in the body of Christ. Yeah. All right. What did he say? Even if you abide not in Him, you are cast forth as a branch in this vine. Yes. But if you obey not Christ, then that branch is cut off, and it withers, and it's cast into the fire. Brother, I said there would be a separation. Yes. There would be a separation from this body. All right. Listen, brothers. You have been cast forth in this vine. You have always been this branch. The question is, will you bear fruit? 
really bear fruit, man. Because there's only one way to bear fruit, brothers. Only one. Uh, that is to continue in Christ. To be obedient to Christ. To what Christ says. For the reason that Christ says it. It's the only way, man. Without that, you shall not be fruitful. You shall not. Some of you that have kicked it out here on the streets probably understand what I'm talking about. You've seen many groups come and go, haven't you? You've seen many people bring stuff and get stuff and come and go, haven't you? Haven't you? Where's their fruit? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. A good fruit tree lasts a long, long, long time. It doesn't rot and it doesn't ruin. It continues to come back year after year after year, producing good fruit year after year after year. But it's this when you do what Christ says, the way that Christ says, for the reason that Christ says, you will have fruit, brothers. Remember what we are. We are disciples. Discipling other disciples. To go and make more disciples. It's a never ending sacrifice. Yes, of discipleship. This is the reason why I come here to teach the things that I teach, brothers. Because without anything that I teach you, you cannot be a fruitful disciple. It's just that important. It truly is, brothers. Yeah, it truly is. Continue in Christ. Even after you stumble. Even after you fall. Even after you shame yourself. And you shame your father. And you shame your brother and your wife and your kids. And every other person that you know. Keep going. And cross the word. Continue loving those who hate you. Blessing those who curse you. Praying for those who despitefully use you. Continue trying to reconcile with those people whom you have wronged. Reconcile with those people who have wronged you as you forgive them, brothers. There's so many things that Christ is telling us. Yeah, so many things that we must continue in. And brothers, I know some of them are very, very, very hard. Trust me. I know. But when are you going to give up? Why are you going to give up? I hope that is never done. I don't know about you, but there's something I've come to understand. There's a war going on around us! Yeah, we don't see it. We, don't, yeah, we can't see the spiritual battle that's taking place. But you can feel it! Yeah. And you can see the result of the spiritual battle around you! Yeah. People dropping like flies! How I many of you shouldn't be here today? How I many of you should not be breathing today? I know I shouldn't be. And yet here we are. Because listen, you are a soldier in this war. You truly are. And God has given you weapons and armor to fight this war. Yeah. To endure and exist in this war. Because whether you know it or not, brothers, the victory is already yours. The victory is already yours so long as you continue in Christ's word. <sighs> brothers, if your desire is genuine, if the love within you is pure, man, yeah. If your desire is pure, the Holy Spirit will bless you. The Holy Spirit will cleanse you, brothers. The Holy Spirit will take those desires from you, man, that's leading you to do things, that's causing you to drop your head and not look up, that's causing you not to teach what Christ is teaching you, brothers. Yes. So that you could. So that you could have the confidence. So that you could have the boldness, brothers. To teach and to say what it is that needs to be said. As you disciple those other people around you who are going to disciple other people around them. Yes. The Holy Spirit will teach you these things, brothers. Trust me. I wasn't able to quit drugs because I was strong dead. I didn't go to trust that program. I didn't go to rehab. I didn't go to detox, man. I didn't do none of those things. Jesus was enough. Yes. The strength and power that Jesus gave to me because of my genuine desire for him was enough. 
that is, it's enough for you. I promise you. The question is, is your desire genuine? Is it pure? Is this what you want? Because I hope so. I can't think of no other reason why you sit out here in this cold weather listening to me in my loud mouth. I'm, I'm just saying, man, you know. Because we've been coming out here over five years now. Two weeks ago this Sunday I made five years for us. I'm just saying. Man, it missed the meeting, man. Man, we watch them come. Watch them get their food. Watch them leave, you know. And it breaks our hearts. It doesn't make us mad. It doesn't make us feel like they're using us. It ain't got nothing to do with it, brothers. Because we understand that the good part, the good part, the true nourishment is right here and right now. The part that you can't even see. Take it in, brothers. Grab a hold of it. Give God your whole desire. And watch God move in your life. And work for you. And change your circumstance, brother. And strengthen you. And lift you. And exalt you. And strengthen you. And show you. Bless you. And then, watch you bless those people around you. Watch you bless those people that you love. Watch you bless those people you've never even met before. Watch you lift them too. Because they heard the genuineness in your voice. They saw the desire in your fruit, brothers. Don't give up. Never be ashamed. Never be ashamed, brothers. Christ calls us his friend. I kind of understand that I didn't have no friends. If Christ is the example of what a friend really is, how many of you have friends? I don't know. Christ did already die for me. And this is how I know he's my friend. Yeah, alright. Because he called me friend. He died for me and called me friend. But I hope that some of you, at least all of you, know that I would die for you. That I would die for this meeting. I would die for what it represents. I would die for what it teaches to you, man. I would die for it. Without a doubt. No hesitation. Because I hope that you feel this way for Christ. At the very least, man, start right there for Jesus Christ. Because He did that for you, that you not be able to bear fruit. Without continuing in this word, you shall not. My scripture, John 13, 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye love also one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one to another. This is us. As you trying to make disciples. Yeah. As you're trying to share this truth with them, man. Yeah. As you're sharing this passion, this fervor that's burning in your heart with these people around you. Yeah. This is how they're going to know you're genuine. This is how they're going to know of your true desire and passion. Because of the love that you share with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. This is how they should know. This is why they like to believe the words that come out of your mouth when you read the scriptures to them. Because of this word. Carry it, brothers. Carry it. Bury it. Bury it deep in your heart. Yeah. Now let it grow. Water it with the word. Water it with the word that it will grow, guys. You must go forth bearing fruit. And your fruit must remain. Your fruit must remain. Those people that become fruit, when they call on Jesus Christ, when they confess Jesus Christ, that fruit's got to remain to be considered and counted as your fruit. And that fruit will not remain if you do not share the truth with them. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't gloss it over, brothers. It's got to be the pure, undiluted, undefiled truth. Because it's only going to be by this truth that they should be set free. Yes. Remember this, brothers. Remember this. The truth. The good fruit must remain. Alright, guys. I know it's cold. Uh, I love you all. Next week, uh, bring somebody. We're going to... Uh, Go bring a little extra food, the hand and stuff. We didn't 
Kim were, well, we were going to do the Christmas thing today, but we decided to do it next week instead. Uh, so, come next week. Yeah, bring somebody. Y'all got a good meal for sure. Yeah, bring your faith. Maybe the Lord brings something else. I don't know. Yeah, all right. Those of y'all ready to make this commitment, man. Any of y'all ready to bear this fruit? Any of y'all that's ready to abide in this band? Well, brothers, let me know. Let me know, man. I love you. I love you. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to get cold water, man. I'm not afraid to get sick. I'm not afraid to catch some flesh eating bacteria or whatever other excuses people make for themselves. I'm not afraid. We give thanks for this example of discipleship, Father. We give thanks for this Lord, Father, that we might grab a hold of, Lord, that we might continue in and walk with, Father, so that we can be the disciple of Jesus Christ, Father, our Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to fall upon these men, Father, that there would bring confirmation to them, Father, to their minds and to their hearts, Lord, as they are doing their best to convert to you, Father, to, to turn to you, Lord, that they might obey you, Lord, and receive these gifts that you have promised to us, Father. Whether today or that last day, Father, and all that exists between, Lord, you know all things. We lift this meeting up to you, Father, that it be glorified you. We the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.